It's a beautiful morning and we say good, 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 good morning to you, a lovely one to you and thank you so much for joining us on Stream TV today, 7th of August 2020 and it's a Friday, we're wrapping up your working week for you. My name is Bismarck Brown and thanks for the pleasure of your company this morning. We're going to take a tour together to find out what's making headline news this beautiful morning on the various front pages and we call this program the front page you are invited to bring your products and your business here and will certainly reach your prospective market for you we'll kick off with the daily guide newspaper and it comes with a photograph of his excellency president nanado dankwe kufuado as well as former president john dramani mahama banner headline mahama goofs gives nana eight years and i'm sure you've seen uh, this video on social media already where uh, after his uh, registration, the former president, John Mahama, uh, granted an interview to the media uh, where he was talking about the challenges the country has been going through uh, in the period within Nanado's uh, governance. And he kept on referring to eight years, eight years, eight years. And he talked about eight years of corruption, eight years of hardship, eight years of nepotism and all of that. But interestingly, Nanado has only spent four years in office, and that's why the paper uh, uh, caption said Mahama Groves. It's on the front page here of Daily Guide this morning. Also on the front page of Daily Guide, Seku fights Professor Okwe over Founders Day, and Seku Nkrumah is a son of Osajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, Ghana's first president, uh, who has some ideological uh, uh, disagreements with the Right Honorable Speaker of Parliament over founders day and this uh, i know will certainly be uh, a very long debate uh, which will never go away it's on the front page of daily guide and as judge gets pension benefits i met empty coffers uh, kufuado tells chiefs and the story uh, indicates how uh, his excellency the president intimated to uh, chiefs on his store uh, the kind of government he met and the finances of the government at the time he came to office and it's captured president Nanado Danko Kufadu says he inherited almost an empty state coffers from the SOR NDC administration and according to him the highly touted massive infrastructure development claimed by the NDC administration ahead of the 2016 general election was just propaganda because upon assumption of office what the Kufadu administration saw on the ground did not reflect the massive projects the NDC claimed it left behind. And let me just quote His Excellency the President. Uh, we've gone very far. I think that anybody who is sincere can look across the country. Firstly, I think there are two things about these roads. All of us came together and then we unleashed a massive program of roads rehabilitation across the country. People can see that indeed the roads are being tackled. And it's on the front page here of daily guide government redirects public spending attributed to the vice president dr mahmoud baumia let's move on to the chronicle of friday and the chronicle this morning uh, says delinquent was his student pounds on reporter for attempting to probe alleged exams more practice and it comes to the photograph of mr damali emmanuel uh, who is a reporter uh, for the daily graphic newspaper in the eastern region he's based in koforidia and there was a drama at bright senior high school and achim kukrentumi based private senior high school in the Ebuakwa north municipality of the eastern region when final year students nearly lynched uh, the graphic reporter uh, who went there uh, but for his ability to run fast from the scene and jump onto a moving commercial vehicle to escape from the angry students some of who were wielding knives cutlasses sticks and stones a different story would have been told yesterday and the pic the story comes with this photograph with blood um, uh, oozing on his head and it's on the front page of the chronicle today also on the front page of the chronicle ndc and desiree over a hoy's book um working with rollins is stirring controversy within the ndc also on the front page of the chronicle harun idrisu is the minority leader in parliament less than 10 mps show interest in law making and i'm wondering why they are in parliament the minority leader harun idrisu has raised concerns over the lack of interest 
in the rudiments of lawmaking by a majority of Ghana's legislators. Story continues that according to the Member of Parliament for Tamale Central, not more than 10 legislators contribute to lawmaking daily. He said if he was asked to make an assessment as Harun Idrisu, the minority leader on parliamentarians who show interest in legislative drafting, quote, I cannot count more than six to ten members of parliament, particularly even the young ones that you call the newcomers. I probably can narrow to even five newcomers who are interested in the rudiments of lawmaking daily, unquote. And the minority leader uh, made these observations uh, at a working dialogue with the core leadership of parliament on the need to nurture career legislators. So this was actually a conversation amongst members of parliament where uh, the honorable minority leader observed that less than 10 MPs show interest in lawmaking. So question is, why are they rooting to go to parliament this year if they are not interested in, go, in making laws? Why are they in parliament in the first place? Well, that's on the front page of the Chronicle today. On the front page of the Inquisitor, Let's turn attention to it. Military accused in land guard activities. And it comes to the photograph of Lieutenant General Obi Aqua, who is the Chief of Defense Staff, as well as the Minister of Defense, Dominic Nitiwol. And the story talks about some military personnel who have been cited uh, in the Shai uh, Enclave uh, undertaking uh, land guard activities. And the story. Uh, talks about some chiefs raising concerns and also even writing a formal petition to the military high command uh, for this to stop. The Inquisitor also says, NAPO, COVID-19, not for rich men alone, says registration of students in schools was best. On the front page of the Inquisitor as well, initiate criminal proceedings against Ahimkra, Tema residents, I beg your pardon, Tema resident, petitions IGP and a resident of Tema has petitioned the Inspector General of Police to commence criminal proceedings against actions of the former Deputy Minister of Trade and Industry and Member of Parliament for Tema West Constituency Kingsley Carlos Ahinkra and Mr. Ahinkra was widely criticized for interacting with some uh, of his constituents knowing very well he had tested positive for COVID-19 uh, and the petitioner is Enoch Ejapong uh, who is asking uh, that the Public Health Act 2012 Act 851 uh, be implemented or, as it were, be enforced uh, to ensure uh, punishment for the Honorable Member of Parliament for Tema West Constituency. On the front page of the Inquisitor, and the Inquisitor says, Zoom Lion to build second Ita credits first to its water treatment plant. That's also at the top right corner of the paper. Let's move on to the informer. And the Friday edition of the Informer, uh, this morning says, Working with Rollins, Kwamena Ahoy calls own goal, damages Mahama campaign. And I'm sure you know about the impact of this book so far on the politics of Ghana, and in particular, the politics of the NDC. And questions have been raised about the timing of this book. The Informer says, Aftermath of Professor Kwamena Ahoy's ill-timed book, Baby Cabal Blame Media, for their woes after paymaster blows cover. The informer says, I am for just an equal society. That's attributed to the former president, John Mahama. Communications minister missing as Sam George chases Esla Owusu with Kenny GVG questions. And he filed a question to be answered by the minister. But according to reports, the minister did not show up to take the questions. Well, we we'll move on to the Daily Graphic of Friday. And the Daily Graphic this morning comes with a photograph of the Director General of the Ghana Education Service, Professor Kwesi Opokwa Mankwa. Banner headline, Outcry over Wase Misconduct, GES denounces students' offensive act, corporates to be debordinized. But the guys are leaving school. <laughs> they are completing school. How do you debordinize them? Well, but the uh, extremely reprehensible and appall it is extremely reprehensible and appalling, according to the Ghana Education Service, uh, that students would uh, resort to insulting the president and also um, committing to violence uh, in their schools, destroying property 
and even attacking invigilators as well as reporters. And the Ghana Education Service has indeed uh, condemned this act and has taken it up in terms of dealing with them. It's not just the Ghana Education Service uh, talking about this matter. The National Commission for Civic Education, NCCE, has also condemned uh, the behavior of some of these students and it's captured by the daily graphic of today also on the front page of the daily graphic Kennedy Japan mobilizes four hundred and twenty eight thousand dollars to evacuate Ghanaians and if you recall we actually also did a story on stream TV where some stranded young Ghanaians uh, in Lebanon uh, were, were making an appeal through a Ghanaian as well based there uh, to the government and also the honorable member of parliament for Ascent Central to assist in their evacuation to Ghana because they are stranded. We're told by the Daily Graphic that the Honorable has uh, personally been able to raise $200,000 and has been able to mobilize from other sources through uh, an appeal, uh, public appeal, I, I must say. Uh, so they've been able to raise a total of 428000 The check was presented to the Foreign Affairs Minister yesterday. Daily Graphic says, don't make Parliament preserve of elite wealthy and um it's all it's here the leadership of parliament has called for major reforms in the processes and procedures political parties use to determine and select their leaders particularly those who become members of parliament it said a critical view of the structures and the constitutional provisions of parties that required parliamentary uh, primaries to be conducted every four years was not the best hence parties must find uh, other ways of choosing or affirming their MP. Such reforms, uh, the Member of Parliament um, noted uh, that indeed will go a long way uh, to strengthen Parliament. And it comes to the photograph of uh, First Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Joseph Osei Wusu. And that is on the front page of Daily Graphic. The Daily Statesman is our next paper. Banner headline, Nana endorses wicked plot against JJ. NDC running mate says Ahoy was honest in controversial book. And this book, um, you know by now, is indeed stirring a lot of controversy and ruffling uh, feathers. And we're told by the Daily Statesman that the foreword of that book was actually written by uh, the running mate of the NDC, um, Professor Nana Jane Opoku Ajeman. And according to the Daily Statesman as well, she edited uh, the book and approved its content as publishable and also wrote the foreword. And it's on the front page of the Daily Statesman. And uh, also here, President expresses confidence in oil and gas graduates on the front page of the Daily Statesman. The Ghanaian Times is our next paper and the Ghanaian Times talks, uh, talks about uh, students who have been taken to violence and also openly insulting uh, political leadership. Demo over ongoing 2020 WASI, GES, others slam riotous students demand punishment for those who vandalized, destroyed school property. And it's on the front page of the paper. Rowdy SHS final year students beat WAEC official invigilators and journalists on the front page of the Ghanaian Times as well. ECN's nationwide voter registration exercise embarks on two-day mop-up Saturday and it comes to the photograph of Mrs. Jean Mensah. So if you have still not registered to vote in the 2020 elections, you have some Saturday and Sunday as well uh, to take advantage of and do it. On the front page of the Ghanaian uh, Times, explosion at Beirut Airport, Lebanese Embassy opens book of condolence in Accra Monday. So Monday, the Lebanese Embassy will be opening a book of condolence uh, following the explosion in the capital of Lebanon, Beirut, very close to the country's port. And uh, several people have died as a result and several also injured, and it's on the front page of the Ghanaian Times. The Daily Dispatch is our very next paper. 2020 voters register in ethnic groups part three, focus on former voter and northern regions. On the front page of the Daily Dispatch as well, EC extends registration at district offices to Sunday, and it's captured by the paper. The Insight is our last paper for domestic 
uh, news headlines uh, will soon hit straight inside Africa. The insight says GWCL, Ghana Water Company Limited, locks pipes after government announces water for free. And it comes to the photograph of the sector minister, uh, Minister for Sanitation and Water Resources, Cecilia uh, Benadapa. And the paper observes that few days after the government announced free water for Ghanaians in a bid to help fight the coronavirus disease, water shortage has hit some parts of the country it is not exactly clear what the problem is but for people who thought the who thought of enjoying the free water supply as announced by the minister uh, in a media re budget review uh, their hopes appear to have been dashed in the meantime the ghana water company uh, limited issued a statement within the week indicating areas that were going to be affected. Well, the Ghana Statistical Survey says 770,000 um, Ghana Statistical Service, I should say, uh, uh, has conducted a survey and 770,000 workers have had their wages slashed, guess what, due to coronavirus. The insight also says government seeks over $166 million loan to purchase armored cars. Whoa. That's on the front page here of the inside. Now, let's move straight inside Africa and find out some of the stories uh, making headline news on our continent. And also, if you hit, if you go to uh, La Côte d'Ivoire, uh, there is tension. Uh, police and military men have uh, hit the streets uh, to control uh, crowds. Ivory Coast police fire tear gas at supporters of former president and police fired tear gas to disperse a protest in the commercial capital Abidjan on Thursday against the exclusion of former President Laurent Gbagbo and others from the voter rolls for October's presidential election. And the uh, Ivory Coast, uh, La Côte d'Ivoire, is going into the elections in October. Um, guess what? Um, the sitting president, Alassane Ouattara, was not billed to contest in this year's election. His prime minister was going to contest. Unfortunately, Mr. Koulibaly died. And so um, he has no option than to contest. Now, supporters of former President Laurent Gbagbo are demanding that he be put on the ballot paper so he can contest. Not just him, uh, they're also calling for his allies like Charles Blair Gould and uh, uh, former prime minister uh, Guliamo Soro to all be included in this election. And it appears it is uh, causing some stir in that country. And that's happening inside Africa. Well, Mauritius uh, is also in the news this morning. Mauritius, coast hit by oil spill. And the authorities in Mauritius have warned of an oil spill along its southern east coast following a breach in a Panama flagged ship carrying oil and diesel. The vessel MV Wakashio had reported a leakage of oil and its crew had been evacuated, the Ministry of Environment said in a statement. Let's talk about malaria in Africa and let's move straight to Rwanda. Malaria in Africa, parasite resistant to artemisinin and a drug resistant strain of the parasites that causes malaria has been identified by scientists in Rwanda. Uh, the study published in Nature found the parasites were able to resist treatment by artemisinin, a frontline drug in the fight against malaria. This is the first time scientists have observed the resistance to the drug artemisinin in Africa. The researchers warn uh, that this would uh, pose a major public health threat in the continent. Well, that's about it for this morning. We appreciate your time throughout the working week. Well, enjoy your weekend and keep your eyes on Stream TV. We are live this morning on Facebook and live on YouTube. Enjoy your weekend, keep well, and let's see you in one piece as we start the uh, coming week. My name is Bismarck Brown. Have an awesome day.